This is the Rough River Canard Fly-In, the largest gathering of canard aircraft annually in the world. And I flew there in my cozy. This actually goes for three full days. I end up going just for the Saturday as it was the only thing I could fit into my schedule. I thought I would show you my takeoff here. Before I turn around, you notice how I can just pivot the aircraft around and that's because it has a fully castering nose wheel. I just thought I'd, I'd include that in the video so you can see that. I then add a little bit of power just to straighten out the nose wheel before the takeoff run. I am flying to Rough River State Park which is where the canard fly-in is held every year. And here we are taking off on 3-6. This is not my favorite way to take off at my home airport, simply because this end of the runway is in such rough shape. You can see me bouncing around here. And at 60 knots, nose back, and rotate at 75. Off we go with plenty of room, and clear the trees at the end. So the Rough River Fly-In is one of the oldest ongoing canard events. Uh, the first one was held in 1986. That was the first year that the Central States Association, which is the predecessor to the Canard Owners and Builders Association, was actually in operation. And it's been held ever since for 27 years. Today is the 27th annual Rough River Fly-In. I had several people ask if I was going to attend this year, and I really wasn't going to be able to do it, but I, I shuffled some things around so that I could at least come out on the Saturday. So I, I got up quite early and headed out first thing in the morning and flew down to Rough River Dam State Park in Kentucky. And you can see the Ohio River winding back and forth below me here. I did have to do a 360 here because there was another aircraft and another Cozy uh, coming in at the same time as I was. So uh, I did 360 for spacing here just to, to let him in in front of me. Now I'm coming in here to land in front of uh, an airport full of canard pilots. Now, if that doesn't make you nervous, nothing will. So I've got all these canard pilots with, you know, various, some have been flying for tens of years in, in canards, and some of them are relatively new, like myself, to canard flying. So they're all on the ground watching me. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to ignore all that and just land like I always do. The runway here is 3,200 feet, which is the same length as my runway at home. It's also uphill, so I'm landing uphill here, uh, which will help with the deceleration. Because there was no real wind today, most people were landing on two uphill, and then to take off, they were turning around and taking off the other direction so that they could do their takeoff roll downhill. So here I have some deceleration, and I didn't really have to brake all that hard because again, I'm going uphill. I pulled into the uh, the ramp here, and I realized I have no idea where I'm supposed to go and park, and there wasn't really anyone there. This is not an organized fly-in. There aren't events and schedules and seminars. It's a very relaxed kind of just, hey, show up and see the other planes and talk to all the other pilots. And here's a, a video of 
my landing. Somebody shot this from the ground. This is the first time I've actually seen myself landing in my cozy. You can see I, I break a little bit harder right about there just so that I can make sure that I'm going to make this turn off. And there I am. There's there's uh, my airplane. You notice the rudders are out because I'm on the brakes. So once I found a place on the ramp to park my cozy, I started having a look around. There were, this is an earlier picture. I believe that was from the Friday. There weren't all that many planes. Uh, this is on the Saturday. By the end of Saturday, I think we had 60 aircraft there. I did see a BD-4C there, which uh, I had never actually seen one fly before. This was interesting because uh, this was on my short list of airplanes to look at. Uh, so it was interesting getting to see one close up and getting to see one actually take off. I was actually kind of surprised at how much runway he used. Uh, you know, going downhill on that runway, he used a, quite a bit of it. And then you can see he's not really climbing, and now finally he starts climbing out. I don't know if he did that on purpose or if he was heavy or what the, the, the issue was there. So having a look on the ramp, there are a whole lot of cozy or, or canard aircraft here. Here's some Defiance. That Defiant there was just flown over the ocean from Finland. That's why it has that temporary N number on the side. There is a uh, Lancer, so, uh, quite a few long easies. And off at the other side is where all the cozies were parked. You can see the cozies down at that end. I, for some reason, they parked me up at this end. So here's my cozy right there next to a Defiant. Here's where all the cozies were down at that end. You can see there was also some aircraft parked out on the grass there. Um, I didn't take more of this type of video, but more and more aircraft continue to arrive throughout the day. They uh, presented this, uh, this picture that was taken over top of the state park to the manager of the state park just because they've been so gracious in allowing us to have this fly in here every year. So they, they made this presentation, which I thought was a, a kind of a nice uh, gesture. <laughs> I started walking around, having a look at the other planes. Here's some cozies here. There's one with a, a front hinge. I saw a cozy here with vortex generators on the main wing. It also, of course, had them on the, the uh, canard as well. Plug your YouTube channel. <laughs> Don't forget to smash that like button. <laughs> no, your YouTube channel. Oh, uh, Russ Rome's? Yeah. Yeah. Come watch my videos. I make them about cozies. All right. So there's Russ of Russ Rome's. He's a really nice guy. Check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it in the description. Here's his cozy. It's just beautiful. He's only been flying it for two years. He uh, built this himself. Has no back seats. It's only cargo. And he has those beautiful windows, which I thought was a really great idea. So we did some uh, airflow testing tests here on some of the airplanes. You can see we're spraying on this uh, liquid indicator that w that uh, then will move as airflow flows over the wing as the airplane goes flying. When they come down, you can see exactly how the airflow is flowing at the intersection between the wing and the uh, uh, our vertical stabilizer. So here's Russ taking off. That's Russ taking off in his cozy just after that green flow indicator was sprayed onto his wing. And here's another cozy taking off also with that indicator sprayed on the winglet at the edge just so we can all have a look at it and see how the airflow is flowing over that control surface. Here comes Russ landing, and I noticed when I was editing this video that his nose wheel was actually shimmying. 
you can see as he uh, gently brings the nose down, it really starts to violently shimmy there. I sent him this video later on and, and uh, he was actually surprised. He said, this is only the third time this has happened in two years. He didn't know, so he's glad that I actually captured that on video. You can see also he has his, his landing breakdown still. And there's Russ. And you can see the green on the on the left side of the screen there on his uh, winglet. Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought you had given me the like. I'm done. No, I, I was actually. Is this this look like what you oh, want? Okay, okay. That's so what I do, Russ. Looks like it works. What is it like? Truck line dust? What is it? What did y'all put on it? It's just like a pigment powder. Where did you spray? Did you spray this? No. That's cool, huh? It goes up. It's green all the way up to here and then green all the way up to here. Huh. So it pulled that all the way up. But there's the separation right there. How big is Well, yeah, it's about the same size that that's, you know, right at the end of it. It's separations at the back end instead of the whole rudder. Yeah. Right. That's pretty cool to see, though. Yeah. Having a look at the other cozies parked on the grassy area on the taxiway in from the runway. And there were some pilots that came in and just did a high-speed pass, beat up the runway. Here comes a long easy doing that. They had a car show going on at the same time, which was kind of cool to see. I didn't actually have time to go look at any of these cars because I was busy looking at the airplanes. They had some food trucks here set up as well, so that was nice. Uh, I had a look at this UL520 IS engine on a Cozy, and the owner of this did some 3D printing and modeling to create his downdraft cooling system. You can see he has two NACA vents on the top of his uh, turtle deck that bring in both cooling and intake air for his engine. And then he has those, those uh, baffles that he designed and as well as lead weights on the back because the engine doesn't weigh as much as a Lycoming, which is the airplane was designed for. So he has to have some ballast at the back to uh, uh, handle that. Here's a, a cozy with a uh, fairly old Franklin six cylinder. This is what you would see on Cesta 172s back in the 1960s. Here's a, uh, it, well, I, I has not a long easy, but it was a long easy based, and you can see it flying over here that had retractable gear, so it was a highly modified version of a long easy. Very fast. Then we had a look at the Defiance here. These are twin engine Rutan designed aircraft. You can see the canard is much, much larger in order to carry the weight of the second engine up front. And it has that kind of shark fin at the bottom that is actually used to control yaw because there are no rudders on the back. If you look at the winglets, there's no rudders on them like the other canards. So for directional stability and control, it actually uses that upside down rudder shoved down at the front of the aircraft. There are not very many of these Defiance that actually are flying today and four of them were here. And we did have a single velocity show up. Uh, this, The owner of this aircraft bought it as a project so he's got it to the point where it's flying. It, it obviously has no interior and it needs some paint work but it's uh, it's flying and it's, it's uh, working well for him. Here is a Berkut, looks like a fighter pilot uh, cockpit with those canopies, very, very fast. Uh, I only saw just, I think the one that showed up. Here is Rafe's uh, Speed Canard. This is the aircraft that they do a lot of the Canard pilot transition training in.
And this one had some custom electronics taped up front here. I don't recall what that actually, the function of that actually was. I did talk to him about it. And he had an oil cooler up front with some air coming into it that he uses as a heater. So it uses oil plumbed all the way up to the front of the aircraft. This was a very, very nice, clean engine install. It was just beautiful, so I had to take some uh, video of it. This was an electronic circuit breaker system, and that was the breakout panel that he used to be able to connect all the different things to that electronic system. Long Easy's and Canards made of fiberglass are supposed to be white so they, did, they don't get too hot from the sun. This one was not, and it was extremely hot to the touch. And of course, the uh, high-speed flybys kept continuing throughout the day. Huh? And the day came to a close. It was time for me to head home. Unfortunately, there is no fuel at the field. This was uh, 2 India 3 is the airport at Rough River State Park. Uh, and they don't have fuel at this airport. So I had to make an eight minute flight up to Breckenridge Airport, which does have fuel. And not only does it have fuel, it has cheap fuel. I think I paid $5.35 a gallon, which is the cheapest I have ever paid for fuel for this aircraft. Taking off downhill out of Rough River. And just a short eight minute flight up to Breckenridge. The heat of the day had definitely made a difference. It was extremely gusty coming into Breckenridge. You can see I'm getting tossed around quite well. Uh, you can see through the little uh, gap there underneath my uh, sunshade. I could see a lot more than the camera can, uh, as you might imagine. Uh, I did bring in a little bit extra speed because of that gustiness. I didn't want to uh, find myself without airspeed all of a sudden because of wind shear or gusting. So I had to bleed it off, so I am you're holding the aircraft off. There we go. I'm down. And because of that, I end up using pretty much all of their runway just because I was bleeding off speed in that uh, flare. And once I got there, I saw not one, but two CBs. How often do you see these aircraft? And, I, and they had two of them, and they are flying. I talked to the owners uh, while I was there. Amazing flying boats. So time to take off from Breckenridge and head on home. I did want to make sure I got home before it got too, too dark. Uh and again, very gusty. As soon as I rotate into the air, you can see again, I'm getting kind of thrown around a bit. Just got to get some altitude because there are a lot of hills, not quite mountains, but very, very hilly uh, terrain around here. So climb up, get some altitude and head on home. So this was a really interesting and fun day. I had a great time at the Rough River Fly-In. I met a lot of people. I, I was really looking forward to meeting Russ, and I met uh, I, I met several of the people whose videos I had been watching uh, since long before I actually had my own cozy. So it was great to actually talk to them. And the one thing that just kept happening over and over was that everybody walked up to me and said, "Hey, you're the YouTube guy," and apparently, if you have a canard aircraft or are interested in canard aircraft. Uh, apparently you watch my YouTube channel because <laughs> I had, it, I mean, it must have been 40 or 50 times people walked up and they said, hey, I, I love your videos. I see your channel. So that was really a, a nice thing to see. And the total for the fly-in was 20 cozies, 20 long easies, and a total of 60 canard aircraft made the fly-in this year. So that was fantastic to see. It apparently was one of the largest ones they've ever had. Now I'm 
at my home airport, landing once again on 3-6. So, well, I was gonna say that means there's trees, but there's trees no matter what. There's trees at both ends of this this uh, runway. So, you gotta come in and kind of drop it in. Not much wind today, so I don't have to keep my speed up that much. So I can bring it in pretty much at minimums right over top of the trees and onto the runway. I do have both my rudders pushed out here just to slow down and come down. And then I let up just before touchdown to make sure I'm not landing with my brakes on. And just hold it off, hold it off, and down we come. And then on the brakes. I did float a little bit, so I am not making that first turn off there, but it doesn't really matter because, again, I can just pivot this plane right around. I don't need a turn off. I can, I can turn it around 180 degrees on the tightest runway, which is what I'm doing right here. Well, that was my trip. I saw canards with vortex generators. I saw oil coolers or heaters. I saw beautiful paintwork. Uh, this one just astounded me, and I really enjoyed meeting all the people at the Rough River Canard Fly-In. Uh, if you like what you saw here, hey, click like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. It really helps me grow this channel, and I really appreciate it. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.